Hello, I'm Tom Auer, and in this video we'll give you a quick tour of CalFloraViz and the process behind it. In the summer of 2008, we were given access to a large plant sample collection from the Consortium of California Herbaria. Our main goal was to develop a web map that would allow a user to quickly and easily explore, spatially and temporally, the georeference point samples in the dataset. Setting out to learn Action Script 3 by Summer's End, we had a simple but functional tool. In setting up a web map that used client-server interactions as the main method for delivering data over the internet, we had to deal with a large volume of points, over 377,000, which would often slow server responses. Seen here are all of the points mapped at once. We developed two ways to handle this problem. First, on the database server side, we aggregated the points to relevant polygon regions, in this case, Jepson sub-eco regions, which are defined by groups of flora. Second, in the interface, we force users to navigate the phylogenetic hierarchy first, limiting the total number of records they can request. This made client-server interactions much faster. Following the hierarchical selection, a range of other features make CalFloraViz more useful. The key symbols are coxcombs, or polar area charts, that bin the records by month for each sub-ecoregion, so that seasonal patterns can be more easily seen. A timeline allows users to filter temporally. And using the Google Maps API, a user can zoom in to generate maps showing the exact point sample locations. Additionally, users can access web links to Wikipedia or the California Plant Names Index to get more information about their selection. So let's take a look at using CalFloraViz. I'm going to start with a family of Hippocastanaceae, which is chestnut trees, typed into the Smart Search box, and select the only genus available and the only species available. You'll notice that after a selection of family or genus, the option to search Wikipedia for either of those entries becomes available, and that would open in another window. Also, after a selection of family or genus, the option to query the California Plant Names Index becomes available and would also open in another window. The timeline loads after selecting at least a genus, and the user can navigate through time setting a temporal window for their generation of a map, which is done by clicking Add. Once the data is returned, coxcombs are drawn on the map over the ecoregions. <coughs> a user can mouse over a particular ecoregion to see that selection displayed over the legend coxcomb and to see the name of the ecoregion they are mousing over. Zooming in, uh, coxcombs are maintained through a number of zoom levels until, upon mo zooming in far enough, individual points are drawn on the map. At any time, a user can press reset or remove to start over.